All right, here is our next to the last lesson in this unit. We're gonna talk about how energy flows through trophic levels and something that's called the 10% rule, which if you've had freshman biology, you should recognize. All right, enjoy the SpongeBob. So as energy moves through an ecosystem from one trophic level to another, it tends to decrease at each level. This is because of the laws of thermodynamics. So if you've never encountered these before, the first law of thermodynamics is basically the law of conservation of matter and energy. You cannot create or destroy energy. That's pretty standard. The second law of thermodynamics is what we talked about in a previous lesson, where during energy conversions, some energy is gonna be lost as unusable heat. It's not that it's destroyed, it's that it's no longer usable or that it has become low quality energy. Because we talked about energy quality before. So the result of this is that you may start a um, food chain, food web, with your producers who have the maximum amount of energy in an ecosystem, but as they get consumed by the primary consumers, you have about 90% of the energy lost as heat, and it's no longer accessible to organisms for them to do work. So it's not destroyed, it's just no longer usable. Then as the next level consumer eats, you have even less energy. So you're still gonna lose another 90% of your energy. So if you start out with 100% of the energy, the next trophic level only gets 10% of that energy, then the next trophic level only gets 1% of that energy, then the next trophic level only gets 0.1% of that energy, and then finally, this last trophic level just gets 0.01% of that energy. Along the way, you're always losing approximately 90% of your energy to heat um, or as heat. This is a general rule. It uh, can depend on which ecosystem you're looking at and which organisms you're looking at. Some of them might get a little less than 10%. Some of them might get a little more than 10% energy. This has a lot of impacts on an ecosystem, which we're gonna look at in a moment. But we summarize this as what's called the 10% rule. And that is that only about 10% of energy gets passed on to the next trophic level, which is gonna have these major consequences. So uh, before we move into that, let's remember ecological pyramids. These are these diagrams that are gonna compare different things at various trophic levels. So you start at the base of the pyramid is going to be the producers, and that's going to represent the amount of some quantity you find in producer. Then you're going to add each trophic level on top of that. So first primary consumers, then secondary, then tertiary, if you have them. After that, quaternary consumers. So you can have different types of pyramids. A pyramid of numbers is going to show you how many organisms are at each trophic level. And so here's a standard uh, type of pyramid of numbers in a grassland. And notice that there's a, lar a large number of producers, there's fewer primary consumers, fewer secondary, and even fewer tertiary consumers. Just because you're losing energy at each trophic level, you usually have less, produ less organisms at each higher trophic level. There are some uh, exceptions to that. So for example, we hear, uh, see here a pyramid of numbers for a temperate forest. Um, the producers that are here are trees. Trees are very, very big. So each tree can support numerous primary consumers. So the base of this pyramid looks very small, but keep in mind, it, it's gonna be, um, each tree is gonna be able to support a lot of organisms. This looks kind of different when we look at something called a pyramid of biomass. So for this, each level of the pyramid represents the dry weight of an organism, which if you remember from a previous lesson, means it's representing the fact that there's less energy at each um, <clears throat> higher trophic level. So you do have, for the most part, producers having the highest biomass. 
the base of each of these ecosystems is going to have the highest biomass from this Wisconsin lake to this Georgia oil field to this, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, coral reef. And as you go higher and higher, you tend to have less biomass. There are some exceptions to that. For example, in the English Channel, your producers are algae. And even though there's less of them at any given time, they reproduce so quickly that they can support a larger population of consumers than the producers are, that are there. And it's one of the exceptions to these pyramids. And then you have a pyramid of energy. And so each level of this pyramid is going to be proportional in size or representative of the production, basically the energy that's available at every trophic level. So this is our standard. We've got the most energy at the level of producers. And as we go up, we've got an approximately 90% decrease. So we have approximately 10% of the energy getting passed on. Notice though, that um, it's not always 10%. So for example, 10% of the producer's energy would be 2081, 2081 joules or well, kilocalories per meter squared per year, etc. Um, so notice that we have actually a little more energy getting passed from producers to consumers. Then as we go from primary consumers to secondary consumers, follows the 10% rule approximately, and then for secondary to tertiary consumers, going from 383 to 21, if the 10% rule applied, you'd have 38 uh, units of energy at the top. So we have a little less energy transfer at that last level. It's approximately 10% that gets passed on each time. And unless you're given other information, that's what you assume. All right, that was a quick one. So on to our next set of notes.